Bless you, Pastor. Everybody praise the Lord. I know you are happy, you'll be happier. God's blessing is coming upon your life. You are not here in vain. Something great from heaven will land on your body right there. Healing, deliverance, miracle. You will catch your own tonight in Jesus' name. Raise up that hand. Let's anoint that hand. Father, we thank you today. Thank you for your people. Happy people, excited people, faithful people, believing people. Lord, I pray that their faith will not be disappointed tonight in Jesus' name. Online, everywhere, I pray you manifest your power so much here at the Alpha location. At Abba here, Mega Mall. Lord, Mega Miracle. Mega Healing. Mega Salvation. And then online, everywhere, manifest yourself in an indisputable, unprecedented manner in Jesus' name. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can sit down. Tonight we are looking at the glorious transformation. Before a glorious translation. That is, there's a glorious translation coming. It will translate us transport us, transplant us in another place. But before that translation, before that transportation, and before that transplantation, there must be a glorious transformation in our lives. I want you to look at Colossians chapter 1. And I'm reading from verse 12. Galatians chapter, uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us, made us, made us to be meet, to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, it says, who has delivered us by his work at Calvary, by sacrifice at Calvary, by what he did on the cross. He has delivered us. What that means is deliverance is already available. Why am I here? Why are you here? Is to pick up. That deliverance already available because it's done it already. You'll pick your own. Salvation, you'll pick your own. Deliverance, you'll pick your own. Healing, you'll pick your own. It's like, uh, you know, the amen is coming from all the way far from Okunani. If it's coming from back here, if you are there, if you are there, soul, spirit, and body, I said, your salvation is available. Pick it up. You get it in Jesus' name. Look at this. Look at this. And he has translated us. Look at that. He has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. He's translated us out of the kingdom of darkness. The power of darkness is broken in your life already in Jesus' name. Like it happened to that, her beloved sister, that the cancer that had eaten up that part of the body and getting to the other, and it's like waiting for death. They are taking you away from the kingdom of death. Death gone. Life has come. 
like it happened to her your miracle is right there today whatever impossible situation the lord will make it possible tonight salvation come and pick it up forgiveness come and pick it up healing come and pick yours deliverance come and pick yours because he has done it already look at verse 14 in verse 14 in whom we have we have not that we are going to have we have calvary has made it available for you and for me we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins you feel the guilt you feel the condemnation and you need forgiveness the forgiveness is here tonight all you need to do is come pick up your own pick up your own pick up your own it will forgive you it will save you it will heal you it will deliver you it will put a smile on your face and the people who see you after tonight they'll say something happened to you i know i see it on your face i said i see it in your eyeball something happened to you where are you ah i can see it's coming your way the glorious transformation before a glorious translation three things we're looking at we're looking at number one the transfer of his righteousness by grace number two the transformation and redemption as a gift number three the translation and the rapture to glory that's where you are going finally glory where are you going finally heaven where are you going finally the palace of god the paradise of god where are you going finally you will get there i will get there by grace if i get there by grace you must get there by grace and that grace is like an ocean it's so deep it's so wide and as i come and take my own portion of grace and the sea of grace the ocean of grace is still as wide and as great and the grace like the river like the ocean that is so wide and is so broad that ocean of grace remains and abides waiting for everyone you will get enough grace for forgiveness for your salvation for your healing for your deliverance and for the sufficiency that you need in your life and today will be your day in jesus name Amen. number one is the transfer of his righteousness that is the righteousness of christ eat to your own account he was righteous, perfectly righteous, wholeheartedly righteous, impeccably righteous. And if you thought you had righteousness, your righteousness was self-righteousness, soiled righteousness, insufficient righteousness, man-made righteousness, traditional righteousness, religious righteousness. It does not match. 
the expectation of the Lord. That's why the Lord is saying that righteousness you are carrying about. I go to church. I was going to church in a number of years. Many, many years I wasn't born again. I go to church. That's not enough. I paid the pastor's deal. I think I did that a lot of times. The sin does not pay for salvation. It does not pay for the forgiveness of God. I do this. I do this. I do that. What you have done is your own self righteousness, soiled righteousness, insufficient righteousness. It's when you come to Christ and He says, That one is imperfect, that one is insufficient, and then He takes that religious, traditional righteousness away from you and He gives you His own righteousness. Number one, the transfer of his righteousness unto you by grace. It tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, reading from verse 21. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, for he that he has made him to be seen for us. How? He took your sin, he took my sin, he took the sin of the person by your side there. He took the sin of the other person. They took the sin of everyone online today. And he placed it on Christ. And he made him to be seen for us who knew no sin. He was perfect. But he took your iniquity. He took your imperfection. He took your transgression, he took your sin, and laid it on him. He took it of you. He removed it from you. He took my sin away. He took my sin away and laid it on Christ. Now I don't have them anymore. The moment you believe. And then, look at what it said, that we might be made we're not like that before. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. The only way to do that is to take the righteousness of Christ and place it on you. And you wear a garment of righteousness which you didn't contribute any amount to, to pay for. I say it this way. He paid the debt he did not owe. I owed the debt I could not pay. And then Jesus came and took my debt. And took my sin. And took everything away. So that Jesus now has taken away my sin. Your sin. And he has transferred to you. His righteousness. Look at Isaiah chapter 53. And I'm reading from verse 4. It says, Surely, surely, no doubt, this is the basis of our faith. When something has been done and it's sure and it's certain and it's irrevocable, irremovable, he's done it. Surely, he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, it says, But he was wounded for our transgression. The transgressor is the one that should be wounded. The transgressor is the one that shall pay for his transgression. And the wound and the judgment that shall come on the transgressor for his transgression. The man shall bear the consequence of his own transgression. But Christ said, I don't want him to bear that punishment. If he bears that punishment, he will die forever. He'll be separated from God forever. But because of who I am, I can die 
rise again and go to the Father and sit on the right hand side of the Father. He cannot do that. Once that death penalty comes upon him, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. The wages of sin is death. Once that comes upon him forever, is separated from God. But I, Christ, he said, I can bear that and then die for him. On the third day, I rise again. And then after showing myself to all my disciples, 40 days with infallible proof, I can go right to the right hand side of God in heaven. He cannot do that because of that. I'll bear it for him. That's why he was wounded for transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, and with his stripes, and with his stripes, were healed. That word healed is a broad word, great word. Not only healing of the body, yes, healing of the body, the deliverance of your soul from attack. No attack anymore. Yeah. No affliction anymore. In that healing, the salvation by stripes, I was healed, I was saved, I was delivered, I was set free. Today, today, your own. You'll pick it up like this, and then your body will say, I am healed. Your soul will say, I am saved. Your mind will say, I am delivered. Pick it up, it is yours tonight. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, it says, All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. That's the transfer. The Lord has laid on him. He took the transgression, everything, without leaving a judge, a beach behind laid it on Christ. And the moment you come and say, I'm sorry for those things. Why am I sorry? I cause pain for Jesus. I cause mighty for Jesus. I cause striking on Jesus. I'm sorry for that. That's what sorry means. I'm so sorry. I repent. I turn. And now my sins are laid on Christ. And his righteousness is transferred unto you. Amen. Amen. Tonight, there's going to be a transaction. Transaction. Because the Lord will take the evil, the bad thing you have, he'll take it away, lay it on Jesus, and the good thing he has will be to your account. Amen. Saved. Forgiven. Set free. Transaction transfer. We're looking at number two here. Number two, we're looking at the transformation and redemption that comes as a gift. Now, if we were to pay for it, what would that mean? To take your heart and your heart at the center of activity and action in your life. If you were to do that and take out that heart and have another heart transplant, the cost will prohibit it. And they will not give you assurance to succeed. They say 50-50. If we take your heart 
that is not working well, that has a hole in there, that has infirmity in there, and that is not receiving the blood in your body and pumping to every part of the body. If we take that away and then we try to put another one, even that other one we're putting, we cannot guarantee its effectiveness in your body if you were to pay for that what do you think if you were to pay for your brain trillions of cells in the brain connected together if you were to pay for that and you remove everything and they bring a new brain if that were possible the cost is prohibitive and then everything you have that makes you a man even even a weak man an impotent man everything you have if they took everything away and then supply something new so that you become a brand new man a brand new woman you'll not be able to pay for that that's why it's a gift and god has a gift waiting for you the gift of a new life the gift of being a new creature the gift of being a new person a new personality and the gift of a ticket that will take you from earth to heaven even that one can you pay the ticket for the ticket that will take you around the world and get to every country, every city in the world, <laughs> unimaginable, impossible. But the ticket that will take you from earth when you leave here and go straight to heaven and have a mansion already waiting for you. That's all the amen for the mansion waiting for you. The price of that you cannot pay. That's why God said he cannot pay for that. She cannot pay for that. I will give her, I will give him as a gift. You have it tonight. I said you have it tonight. The transformation and the redemption that comes as a gift. We're looking at uh, the word of God. It tells us in First Peter chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 1. First Peter chapter 2. Reading from verse 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and all envies and all hypocrisies and all evil speaking. Ah. So, why do I need to lay aside all that? You went to the doctor, you have an incurable disease. And this disease is about to take your life. And the doctor says, from all the gadgets and instruments and tools and machines we have, I will put you to a rigorous test. You do not have more than one month to live. The seeds of eating into your heart, into your lungs, into your brain, everywhere. And, but if we're going to extend from one month to six months at least, for you to call your relatives and talk to them, you have to lay this aside, the smoking, you have to lay this aside, the drinking of kai kai or whatever it is, and the drinking of that, and the cola nuts for idol worship. You have to lay everything aside. You say, Doctor, is that all? I'm laying that aside immediately now to preserve my life. And God is saying for you to have the new life. The new personality for you to have this redemption of the Lord and to be made completely new. Lay this aside. Otherwise, there's no guarantee you will get to that place you are excited to get to. It's saying, wherefore, laying aside all malice. 
all guile, all hypocrisies, all envies, and all evil speakers. I lay them aside. I lay them aside. If you knew what those things will cost you, and what those things will take away from you, and eventually even take heaven away from you and give you hell, hell fire forever and ever. Immediately tonight, you say, I don't want them anymore. I don't need them anymore. I lay them aside. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, it says, as newborn babes, tonight you'll be born again. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby. Something good is coming your way. Look at verse 9. In verse 9 it says, But we are a chosen generation. He chooses us. The people who are not chosen, they were the crowd in society. The people who are not chosen, they are being oppressed by the devil. The people who are not chosen, they are still in darkness. But God says, I love you. God loves you. And he's picking you up and he says, I now put you as part of the chosen generation. Darkness will not have any power on the chosen generation. Evil spirit will not have any control on the chosen generation. Premature death will not get to the gauge of the chosen generation. Any attack, any, any kind of affliction of the devil as it's coming, when it gets to your gate, you will read that invisible sign, chosen generation. Amen. Amen. But if the fellow is not chosen, and the angel of death, premature death, moving around like he did that night of redemption. That no sign of the blood here. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And this fellow, he has money. The sign of the blood is not there. He has popularity. The sign of the blood is not there. He has everything the world can give. But the sign of the blood is not there. This one says, uh, the angel then comes, angel of death, and says, look at this man. He doesn't have the sign of the blood of the lamb. He's taken away. And he goes to eternity on the other side. But you, tonight, who am I talking to? I say, you tonight, the sign of the blood of the Lamb will be upon your heart. The moment you turn away from all those things and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be part of a whole of a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. Look up here. The peculiar people. And Satan knows he dare not touch you. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. <laughs> that Paul was a bad man before. Now born again. Peculiar. Something has happened. It will happen to you tonight. And then the devil and all the evil spirits will say, Jesus, I know. What's your name? What's your name? And this boy, this girl, this man, this woman, I know. They will not touch you anymore. And then it says that ye shall show forth the praises of him who has called you out of 
darkness out of darkness say amen, amen. you have escaped amen. you have escaped into his marvelous light and all that is a gift that the Lord says Christ paid each all he paid for your salvation he paid for your healing he paid for your deliverance and now come and receive as a gift there's you don't pay anything for this somebody asked how is it all this large crowd there's no time for offering because everything they have come for salvation healing deliverance christ has paid for everything for you and now you come you receive i receive i receive heaven says amen you got it and it is the translation transformation and the redemption you have as a gift we're coming to number three here now number three we're looking at the translation at the rapture unto glory we're going to glory i am going to glory the shame of the past will not hold you down. The guilt of the past will not hold you down. The Lord is going to take every shame out of your life. Guilt out of your life. Condemnation out of your life. Everything, anything you did before and the policeman inside you. Every time you want to get something good, that policeman inside you will say, uh-uh, you of all people, don't you remember? Don't you remember? Don't you remember? All that remembrance of your past life wiped away tonight. And then the Lord will take you home to glory. It's called translation it's called the rapture but something happens today before that rapture look at this in um, in uh, hebrews chapter 11 verse 5 by faith enoch was translated that he should not see death and he was not found because god had translated him but before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased god let me explain to you this happened in chapter 5 of genesis chapter 6 the flood was announced chapter 7 the flood came and took them all away except eight people. The flood was worldwide, universal. It was the judgment of God against the corruption of the world. But God looked at Enoch as a peculiar person and thank God your own day your own time has come god will look at you as a peculiar person and he was walking with god first of all we are born again the guilt the condemnation of our sin taken away and we now live following christ i've decided to follow christ no turning back, no turning back. The world behind me and the cross before me, no turning back, no turning back. Though friends forsake me, yet I will follow 
no turning back no turning back god is preparing another kingdom and you will be there and she will be there and he will be there and nothing can come to double cross your way and hold you down you are going to be there he's preparing the kingdom and i will be there i will be there no turning back no turning back that's what happened to enoch he saw the other people doing whatever they wanted to do and they now followed and they now walked in righteousness following after the lord and the lord said the flood is coming but the flood will not get enoch judgment is coming upon this world it's called the great tribulation and there will be that tribulation here there and there everybody will be suffering but the lord says he doesn't want you to go through that universal suffering in the world he says i'm going to take you out it will translate you away from this corrupted, corruptible world, and it'll take you to heaven. Yeah. On the basis that today you say, God, I am here. I will not look back. I give myself to you. I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ today. And that when that time when the rapture will happen. I may be somewhere, you may be here, you may be there. The Lord will raise you up. The Lord will change everything that holds you down. The law of gravity will be suspended for you. And then you go. I'm talking about you then. You go. You go. And then, lo and behold, who am I seeing? Ah, look at that young man. He was at the crusade in Abba Megamore. And he gave his life to the Lord. And the Lord has taken the sin, the shame, the guilt, the condemnation, everything away. He even has a new heavenly dress that was not made in Abba here, made in heaven. And then you are clothed. And I see a crown on your head. And then I say, remind me, what's your name again? And you say your name and that name is in heaven yeah. the same way i am going in the same way you are going yeah. i didn't pay for it i just said oh lord here i am i repent i follow christ no turning back no turning back i didn't pay anything the same way it's happening to you right now yeah heaven that's your home the lord will take you to glory are you ready i said are you ready it's bowed and eyes closed tonight you have a great gift a great possibility that you'll forgive your sin you'll take the shame away everything that has been reaching of the bad thing you've done of the corrupt things you've done of the evil thing you've done and it is written in the book of records everything is going to be wiped away now and the lord is going to take your name and put your name in the book of life you want it you raise up your hand you say lord I turn away from all the bad things I've done before. I receive this gift of forgiveness, this gift of salvation, this gift of eternal life, 
And I want you, Lord, according to your promise, write my name in the book of life. I want you to raise up your hand wherever you are. As you are raising up your hand, please stand up. So the Lord can identify you. That's the peculiar man right there. That's the peculiar woman right there. And he's going to take all your sin away late on Jesus and take the righteousness of Jesus and lay it on you. Don't wait behind. The rapture could take place any time. So this is the time to make the exchange, the transfer. And say, Lord, here I am. I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I'm praying for you now. And that gift of forgiveness, salvation, will be given to you right there. Amen. Yes. Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for your compassion. Thank you for your mercy. There is no sin that is so deadly sinful. Devilishly sinful. There is no sinner that is so deeply sinful that you will not forgive everyone that has indicated they need your forgiveness. Forgive them now in Jesus' name. A good amen. Lord, I pray all the shame, all the guilt, all the condemnation of their passing. Wipe everything away in Jesus' name. Give them the redemption from Christ. Give them the righteousness of Christ. Cover them in the robe of righteousness. Coming from Christ. So that when you see them, you see them as a Christ-like person. Peculiar. Saved. Forgiven, changed, transformed. Transfer right now. The righteousness of Christ to their account. It's done. It is done. And let the Spirit of God bear witness in their hearts with the joy of salvation. They are saved. You are saved. You are forgiven. And the Lord has taken you out of the kingdom of darkness. And now you are in the kingdom of his dear son. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is done. In Jesus' name, we pray. Yeah. Keep on standing. God bless you there. The joy of salvation is now in your heart. We call on our Madrichin overseer tonight to help us as we take the names. And then after that, I'll come back. And tonight, you have a testimony of miracle. Yeah. I... A testimony of miracle confirmed in Jesus' name. Congratulations. What a great decision tonight. I say congratulations. All who raised up their hands tonight, you have been translated from weakness into strength. Congratulations. Please fill those forms very close to you there, very quickly. Tonight is loaded. This is the first phase. We are moving to the second phase very shortly. Quickly, anywhere you are, please. The counselors, please spread all the places. We don't want to miss any name. Each person, anywhere. Some people around the tent over there, on the road, on the supermarket there, everywhere. People are seated or standing 
in this entire mega mall. Capture all the names, please. Quickly, do that quickly. It's a great decision. Decision to move from death to life is a great decision. Decision to move from misery to happiness and fulfillment is a great decision. Wherever you are, please, do quickly, do something. And others who are not here, if you're watching online, and you have given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ this night, after the message of our pastor, there is a link you see on your system. gckhq.org slash connect. As you see those places, please fill out the forms so we can assist you in your new, new work with Christ. Also, if you are listening via radio or television and you just gave your life to Christ, please send your name and your cell number and your location address via SMS or WhatsApp to plus two three four nine one five triple four that is four 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 nine two six three. I repeat plus two three four nine one fifty four forty four ninety two sixty three. Also, there will be a special meeting tagged lunch hour with Jesus for all those who gave their lives to Jesus tomorrow afternoon by 3, uh, 3 p.m. Nigerian time. The venue will be, there's a hall up there, just by my right hand side there. All who have given their life to Christ, maybe yesterday or the day before yesterday, or those who gave their own yes this morning over there when we're having the youth impact. All of you collected together will have a mess, a package for you from our general superintendent. It will, it will be delighted to hear that this new journey you have started this time, you continue on this journey. It gives him pleasure and happiness. And I can show, assure you that he will keep on remembering you in his daily prayers as he prays. So please make up your mind to reciprocate this wonderful gesture. So if you are still there, please do quickly and ensure that we do everything on time because tonight is our night. You cannot go here tonight with the load of your problem. Every problem will terminate here tonight. Tonight is a termination center. God will answer every prayer here tonight. And also there's an announcement of Converse Rally. There will be a Converse Rally banquet, Believer's Banquet, for all those who gave their life to Christ during this crusade on Sunday, 5th May, in all our churches globally. That is, in all Deeper Life Bible Church globally. More details about this will be sent to you. Our pastor takes the great delight to know that this great journey you have started tonight or yesterday night or the day before yesterday night. Continuing this journey. And I can assure you, you will never regret the journey. You will never be happy that you took this decision. And I'm telling you, this is the best decision you will ever take in life. Decision to have a change of address, a change of companionship, a change of company, moving over from darkness into light, you'll be happy. So if you have finished in your own area of counseling, please you raise your banner up everywhere. To my left hand side there, if you are done, please raise your banner, let's see you are done. Otherwise, keep on. Yes, at the middle. Okay, I can see a banner there. Any other banner? Just keep on, keep on. Make sure we capture all. Nobody should be missing. 
Jesus is interested of in everyone, all who have indicated their willingness to serve the Lord and to make it in the rapture. Here tonight, the Lord is very happy about them. So let's get their names, get their uh, phone numbers. With this contact, we'll be able to connect them and know them and visit them again so we can encourage them to continue on this new journey. I can see some, ba some banners over there. Any banner there at my left hand, left hand side? Are we through? Okay. Up front here. How about down there? Yes. How about down there behind the choir? If there are people are, you have finished over there, can I see you? Yeah, raise your banner and wave it at me here. Please go ahead. Let's make sure that nobody is left out. It's op Operation Capture One. Make sure that each forms you filled are giving back to the appropriate authorities who kept here, who keep it and submit it to the church. Yes, I've seen the banner there. Any other banner there? At my, at my extreme left. Any other banner there at my extreme left? Let's do quickly. Let's do quickly, please. Tonight is a glorious night. Tonight is a heavily anticipated night. I am expecting something. I said, I am expecting something. I said, I am expecting something. If you're expecting something, I should see it in your language. If you're expecting something, I should see it in your body language. I said, I am expecting something. Tonight, prayer of faith will be released on your head. Whether you have faith or not, there is a faith that will overshadow your faith. And put the miracle at your doorstep. All you need to do is just to come out inside your house and drop the basin at the ex, at the, just at the near, 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 near your house. And the miracles will fall into that basin. You go home rejoicing. You go home celebrating. You go home thanking God that this opportunity was given to you. Can we, I think it's over now. We shall now all stand up. Now we have finished writing. Can we all stand up? It is time our pastor and Lord is coming now to take over. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Amen. Expectation Amen. will turn to realization. Amen. Miracle. Amen. Healing. Amen. Deliverance. Amen. The Lord is going to give you right now. Amen. That sickness will be healed. Amen. That attack will be cancelled. That affliction will come off your life. Amen. Tonight, the Lord will put a testimony in your mouth. Amen. Where is he? Where is she there? God bless you, you are there. You get it. Lay your hand on yourself and raise up the other hand. When you hear the final amen, your miracle has landed there. Father, in Jesus' name, you are a merciful God. You are a faithful God. What you said, you will do. You will do in every life tonight, in Jesus' name. Here at the Alpha location, and there online, everywhere, Lord, open the way for your miracle to descend upon them right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Sickness, whatever the name, I command that sickness, come out in Jesus' name. Amen. Weakness in your body, whatever is the root cause of that weakness, you are cancelled in Jesus' name. Amen. disease you are healed yeah. you are healed yeah. demon activity affliction attack mental challenge from evil spirit I 
cast you out in Jesus' name. All the sickness, all the disease, all the deformity, everything that has followed you until this time, they are chased away from you. Be healed. You are healed. Be delivered. You are delivered. Be set free. You are set free in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray there will be manifestation, demonstration, and performance of miracle, healing, deliverance everywhere right now in Jesus' name. To my right, to my left, to my front, at the back, online, over the television, over the radio, everywhere you hear the sound of the voice now let that miracle take place immediately thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord it is done in jesus name check up yourself you'll find the miracle right there. It is done. 